So this problem has steam at 60 bar and 440 degrees C entering a turbine through a 0.6 meter diameter pipe with a given volumetric flow rate of 375 meter cubes per minute. And this basically is calling it to call that state one as the inlet steam condition. Down here they'll have state two and then down here state three. Okay. So 25% of the entering mass flow exits through a 0.3 meter diameter pipe at a different pressure of 40 bar and 400 degrees C, call that state two. The rest of the steam exits through a 1.5 meter diameter pipe with the pressure at 0.7 bar and quality of 91%. The flow conditions are steady state, determine the velocity at the inlet, and the velocity at the exit number two, and the velocity at the exit stream number three in meters per second. So let's make a schematic. So we'll have a turbine, and it has one inlet, and we'll call that state one as suggested in the problem statement. And it has an exit at state two, and another exit at state three. And we're given information about the properties at the pressure, temperature, things like that, of the flow at the inlet state one and exit state two and exit state three. To help organize it, make a table of properties. I like to put uh, pressure and uh, state, maybe even scoop that even over some more. I like to put state and pressure. You can put it in bar, megapascal, kilopascal, whatever, temperature, degree C. And because one of the states had a quality given, I like to put a quality in their table. Um, because we're dealing with volumetric flow rates and mass flow rates, I suspect we're really going to need V, the specific volume in meter cubed per kilogram at these states. Now, you can suggest other properties like internal energy, enthalpy, entropy, but we haven't gotten entropy, and this is the beginning of a control volume analysis chapter. We don't even have the need to do an energy balance. This whole thing boils down to doing a mass balance or conservation of mass for a control volume that includes or surrounds that turbine. So no need for enthalpy. Okay. Now let's label our states. This is one. You can make a little note. Say, oh, the note is that this is an inlet state or this is an exit state two. This is an exit state three. All right. Go ahead and put our pressures down in bar. So it's 60 bar, 440 degrees C. We do a little check-in. You conclude it's superheated vapor. So go to table A4, knowing pressure and temperature. And if needed, I can quickly get that specific volume, that specific volume at 60 bar, 440 degrees C, comes in at 0.05122. And I can show that on the next slide page, but let's continue here. So at state two, what do we have? We have a pressure of 40 bar and a temperature of 400 degrees C. We check, and yes, it's superheated, and uh, we would use table A4 to get the property of specific volume, and it's 0 0.07341. If you compare those two numbers, the specific volume at state two is greater, indicating it's, it's more, it needs more room, more volume for each kilogram of that steam at state two. Okay. And then state three, this one had a pressure of 0.7 bar and a quality of 91%. We've done these calculations before. It's a little bit of work. Let me just summarize. You want V, so you get the saturated liquid specific volume at 0.7 bar, 0 0.7 bar. And then you use the quality of 91%. Multiply that times V sub G minus V sub F, saturated vapors, specific volume, and minus the saturated liquid, specific volume.
Well, you can make that calculation and we'll come in with the 2.15224 meter cube per kilogram. So I'm going to erase this to make use of space. So basically we're asked to calculate what is that um, volume, not the volume, velocity at the inlet. So we're, we're, we're looking to find V1, same V2, the same V3. They're all velocities. Okay, sometimes you're going to add additional pieces of information at tables, sometimes not. I mean, you could put the volumetric flow rate, which is fine. So the volumetric flow rate for this one in uh, meter cubed per minute was 375 from right here. All right, you can then say I, I'll convert that uh, the volumetric flow rate meter cube per second and that comes in at 6.25 you divide by 60 all right so we know the volumetric flow rate in meter cubed per second and you're given the diameter in meters and that diameter in meters is 0.6 you can calculate the area how do I calculate the area pi d squared over 4 or pi r squared either one you know take the diameter divide by 2 so it's a radius square it multiply by pi or simply take the diameter square it divide that by 4 and then multiply by pi you get the area in meters squared and so this area for state 1 comes in uh, 0.28 two seven four a little too many digits there sorry okay at this point we see oh we're given we calculated the area we're given the volumetric flow rate and so if you're looking for the velocity you just take the area I'm sorry the volumetric flow rate a V and you divide by the area so at this point you could calculate the velocity in meters per second taking this volumetric flow rate dividing by the area and the answer comes in and we can put it in, into the table of uh, 22.1 meters per second if you wanted to we could come up here 22.1 meters per second and call that the answer to part a but this is really where we calculated it right down here in this table Okay, now to do the same thing, we're going to need to use the mass flow rates and things like that. So I didn't really leave enough room in the column here. Uh, maybe I can do this. I can squeeze something in right here. I'm just going to squeeze that over. All right, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, can I calculate the mass flow rate coming in at state 1? Well, we're given the volumetric flow rate, and we're able to calculate the specific volume. So it's the volumetric flow rate at state 1 times the mass density, or divide by the specific volume at state 1. And if we're able to do that, we'll get the mass flow rate in kilograms per second. In this column, I should even maybe put a separator there, but I'll change color to make it a little more diff di distinguishable. So the mass flow rate is 122.023 kilograms per second coming in. That mass flow rate gets split between states 2 and 3, the two outlets. And the key piece of information is that the 25% of the entering mass flow exits through state 2. So if you wanted to, we could put that M.2 is 25%, 0.25, times what came in, M.1. And we double check, we're careful reading the wording of the problem. Was it 25% of the entering volumetric flow rate? No, it was 25% of the entering mass flow rate that uh, is diverted so 25 percent of 122 gives us a mass flow rate of 
point five oh six somewhere in there and then the remainder the 75 percent is a mass flow rate of uh, 91.517 okay so we've got those mass flow rates from a mass balance um, maybe I should have emphasized that simply a mass balance is that mass flow rate in at one is equal to mass flow rate out at two plus the mass flow rate out at three okay now that I know the mass flow rates I can actually calculate the volumetric flow rate at let's say state two I'll add a notation down here um, the volumetric flow rate AV at state two is equal to the mass flow rate at state two times the specific volume of the steam at state two so we're given the mass flow rate or we calculated it we're able to look up v2 and so we calculate the volumetric flow rate at two so what is our volumetric flow rate at two 2.2394 meter cube per second and you can do the same thing AV at 3 is equal to m.3 times the specific volume at 3 and then we're left with 196.967 meters cubed per second all right um, we are told the diameters the diameter at state 2 of the pipe was 0 0.3 and the diameter exiting at state 3 is 1.5 so that you can calculate the area squared you just continue up here with this equation let's go ahead and calculate those areas so the area is 0 0.07069 and 1.76715 okay now that we know the the areas and the volumetric flow rates the velocity v at each of those let's say v at two is the volumetric flow rate at two divided by the area at two so this comes in at a velocity of 31. Point 68 meters per second so I'll just put it up here 31.68 meters per second box it answer for part B and down here we have for this last one the velocity is 111.46 meters per second 111.46 meters per second all this is based on simply a mass balance calculation no consideration of energy no consideration of entropy these conditions may not be realizable because of entropy considerations maybe it violates the second law of thermodynamics maybe it doesn't or energy balance maybe it violates it we don't have any information about a shaft coming out that would transmit power nor do we have any information about a heat transfer coming in which would heat it although if it's a hot turbine it's actually going to be a negative q dot so this is a very simple problem at the introduction of the chapter dealing with control volume analysis and all it really tests us on is the concept of mass balance with that we'll go ahead and stop